Welcome to the FlexView UD30 Universal Display Quick Start Guide video. Before we start, installation practices, mechanical and electrical, in an explosive environment must be in accordance with local, national, and international standards, codes, and practices. Installation should be carried out by well-trained personnel experienced with these practices. As the name implies, this device is universal. The document can't cover all the applications or configurations possible with this device. Please refer to the FlexView instruction manual for exact instructions for your application of this display. The main topics of this video are planning, mounting, wiring, basic configuration, and troubleshooting of the FlexView Universal UD30 display. Planning on where to install the UD30 is dependent on where the detector needs to be physically located and orientated to detect the gas it was engineered to detect. You must reference the detector instruction manual to find the best practices installation location for that particular detector. Once you know the height and orientation requirements of the detector, you can plan on where best to install the UD30 display. The detector will be installed directly to the UD30 in most cases. You may need to plan on how best to orientate the display for visual awareness and maintenance procedures for the sensor in this type of installation. The UD30 may be remote mounted, dependent on the detector, for easy visual awareness and detector maintenance procedures. This installation requires a sensor termination box, STB, to mount and terminate the detector. The STB is then terminated at the UD30. The display should be mounted to a solid surface. You need to connect the detector and the electrical next. You must remove the display electronics to do this. First, you need to remove the cover. Next, the electronics. They are fitted in the housing with bayonet pins, so there is no need to unscrew anything. Grab the electronics at these two points and pull straight out. There are three conduit entries into the housing. The detector can be installed in any of the three. The electrical can be installed in any of the three. The planning process should have helped you determine which conduit connection the detector should be mounted in. Thread sealant should be used on all connections to the housing. Silicon-based sealants can contaminate some detectors. Check in the UD30 or the particular detector instruction manual to determine if silicon-based sealants should be avoided. Apply thread sealant and install the detector. Now install the electrical connection. Again, using thread sealant before installing. Lastly, you need to use a stop plug, available from Detronix, in any unused conduit entries. Again, use thread sealant before installing the plug. Now you are ready to wire the display. All the wiring is terminated at the electronics board. There are three termination locations. Sensor, power, and annunciation relays. This is a basic wiring diagram for the UD30 with the GT3000 connected. First, let's look at the connection to the power supply and the controller. There are many ways this can be wired. This configuration is a three-wire connection to the UD30. The power supply and the controller are sharing the neutral. The power supply should be 18 to 30 volts DC. It is powering the UD30 and the controller. The 4 to 20 milliamp input is connected to the controller. The heart specification requires there must be a minimum of 250 ohms resistance in the loop to develop the heart signal. Typically, input cards have a 250 ohm resistor in the input as the card converts the 4 to 20 milliamp signal to 1 to 5 volt DC. This is enough resistance, so there are no other external resistors needed for the heart to work. The sensor or detector is connected to the sensor terminals. The UD30 is compatible with many detronic sensors and generic 4 to 20 milliamp devices. 
The wiring for these devices can be found in the UD30 instruction manual. Please refer to it to wire the sensor you are connecting. This wiring is for a GT3000. Proper grounding is important to ensure optimal performance and minimize EMI interference. There are many codes and local best practices that should be followed when grounding the UD30. This wiring diagram is how the UD30 was grounded for certification testing. This drawing is showing an armored cable. The UD30 case and the controller cabinet are connected to earth ground. It is important that the cable glands you use are designed to have a metal-to-metal -metal contact with the armor shield to ensure it is grounded. This is how you would wire an external relay reset switch to reset latched relays. This same switch can be used for initiating a calibration when using certain sensors. Check the UD30 instruction manual for further information. The electronics are held in by a bayonet connection. Line the board up and press it down into the housing. You may want to rotate the display in some installations. It can easily be rotated in 90 degree increments. Simply pull the electronics straight out, rotate it to one of the 90 degree positions, and then slide it back into place. Now it's ready to be configured. Now I'm going to apply power. Here is the warming up slash startup sequence. The UD30 will sequence through all of its display colors and then stop with the reading in units of the configured detector. You should take note of the firmware version if you are troubleshooting. The configuration can be done with a cover on or off. In either case, you will need the Detronics magnetic configuration tool to do the configuration. There are four target locations used to navigate and select the display configuration. There is a magnetically activated read switch under each one of them. The configuration always starts by selecting enter slash select. For basic configuration, all you need to do is get to setup and complete the setup wizard. It will take you through all the basic configuration. The complete UD30 menu tree is in the instruction manual, Appendix F. To complete this guide, we need to cover one last topic, how to troubleshoot in the unlikely event a fault occurs. You must refer to the UD30 instruction manual for guidance on how to resolve faults. The manual has a table on UD30 and detector faults and the recommended action to resolve the fault.